Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's lab. So this week, we will talk about the IM, so that is Identity and Access Management. Uh, so this is a tool that allows us to create different users, groups, uh, policies, and also rules that assign the access to different uh, people or different applications where the, the people and application can access our AWS resources. And IAM is also a free service. Uh, so now let's go to here in our AWS console. Let's type IAM. So um, let's go to the dashboard. Uh, so we identity and access management. So here we can see we still, uh, we had a lab before that um, visited in our lab one. We visited IM. So here you can see right now we logged in as the root user. So we have this warning scene that we should enable the MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication on the root user. So that is uh, recommended. Um, and also you can see here because we are using the uh, educate account uh, so uh, we don't have access to some uh, operations so if you are using a full privilege account and you should not see this um, error okay so now let's look at the left side so here um, i'm on this dashboard and we can create groups so group is a collection of those users so they have the same uh, permissions uh, to do some um, um, to access some resources and users so users can be a person or can be your application that can access your AWS resources so here you can see I have two users that have already been created and roles is something that is similar to users but it has a temporary authentication and also when you define a role the role can be assumed by a person by the user um, by an application or by other AWS services. And also for the role, um, there is no, uh, your, uh, no password or, or no authentication um, that you can write. So uh, it is all be, will be attached to the assigned users of the resources. And policies. So policies are the document that documents that define specific permissions um, so here you can see uh, we have those um, AWS managed policies. Uh, you can also create your own policy. So all the policies are written in JSON document. Uh, so let's first, let's try look at one policy. So let's look at EC2. So if you type EC2, hit enter. And now you can see now we have all the policies that contains EC2 in the policy name. And those are those are all AWS managed policies. And if you check it, uh, look at the first one, EC2 for access. Uh, so here we all see the permissions, uh, the summary of the permissions. Okay, so you can see for this policy, so you are able to use those um, actions or services. And now if we switch to the JSON, you can see the actions will be EC2. And you can, it is allowed to use any resources and this account for any EC2 resources, and it is allowed. And also, you are allowed to use the other resources. Okay, and this account. Okay, so those are the permissions. Uh, let's also look at another one. So let's see S3. So here you can see. And those are multiple um, policies. So, for example, if you want to use um, QuickSight, this one, and so this allows QuickSight to access S3 storage. Okay, so that, that is read only policy. And if you just want to give that read only for all your S3 resources, you can use this one read only access. So, if we open that one, and we can see the permissions. So that is mean that for any S3 resources, so any S3 buckets, and this account, and you are allowed to do the get, uh, like get objects, etc. 
and you are allowed to list do the auto list actions like list your parties, list your party access, etc. And those are allowed. And let's look at another policy. So let's look at S3 and for access. So for access means that you you have uh, read those access and you can also write, you have the right access. You can also upload data to those S3 um, buckets. So you can see here the resources is any S3 uh, resources and this account. And you can do any actions that support it uh, in, on S3. Okay, so those are the uh, AWS managed policies. Uh, of course, if you know the syntax, the JSON syntax, it can also create your own customized uh, policies. So we are not going to do that in this lab. So let's use those existing policies and let's create three groups. So let's go to user groups and let's create the, our first group. And you can see I already have existing users which are not assigned to any groups. Uh, if you don't have any users, uh, you will see nothing in this section. So let's first let's create an EC2 group, EC2 group. So let's assume this is a bunch of people that need access to use EC2 instance. Uh, so let's here let's attach the policies. So again, we are going to use those AWS managed policies. Let's type EC2 and let's give them full access. Okay, so this may not be the best practice. Remember that we should. Uh, follow the principle of least privilege. So in a real world scenario, so depending on the user's uh, requirement, so what options they need, so then you may need to give the least pr privilege that they need to finish their jobs. So here, let's just use uh, for access to, to simplify this lab. And here, let's say we create a group. So now we have one group being created. And it has zero users. And any user that added to this group will be able to access all the EC2 instances for this from this AWS account. So this, this one is a, a root account. Okay, so you can see the account number. All right, um, so let's do the same thing to create another group. And this one, let's say it is S3 group. So this will be the people that will use S3 resources. And let's add S3, hit enter. And we, again, to simplify this lab, let's give them S3 for access and create the group. So now we have two groups. And let's create another group. Let's say this is an admin group. And for this group, let's say uh, those are the people that they can access EC2 and S3. So let's attach the first one, EC2, hit enter, give that full access. And let's also give S3 full access and create that group. And now you can see if you click admin group and you can see the permissions so they can have access to the S3 and the EC2. So this will be a clash of the users that um, they can access both resources. And for the EC2 group, um, they can only access EC2. And for the S3 group, so they have been attached to this S3 for access policy, so they can access all S3 resources. So now we have three groups, so let's add users. So here you can see I already have those users, so let's add new users. Uh, so here, let's say the user one. And for that one, let's, you can give them access key. Um, so that will be used by using the API or CLI or SDK. Okay. Or you can generate password. So that is used to, to assign to person that can log into console. And here you can choose if you want automatically password or if you want customized password. Okay, um, and also if you, you can enable the password reset, so that means, okay, you, you assign a new user a password, and once the user log in, 
that user is able to change the default password to the new password. Okay, so those are something that you can choose. So let's leave everything as a default and the next. So now you can see if you want add them to different groups or if you want attach existing policies directly or copy permission from other users. Uh, so here I would recommend using group because it is easier for us to manage uh, our users. However, you still have option to attach to attach existing policies directly or copy policies from other existing users. Okay, uh, so for the user one, let's say we want this one to uh, in the EC2 group. So user one will be have access to the EC2. You can also uh, add this the same user to multiple groups. So that is also allowed. So let's hit, let's say we just want user one to be this EC2 group. Uh, you can also add tags, and next you can review. Okay, uh, so the EC2 user and also the they will need to change uh, they are in this group and they need to change the password, and the next you will be uh, create that user. All right, uh, so now you can see here. So this is a URL for this user. So this. Uh, because this user is a, is a common AWS IAM uh, user, this is not a root account or for, uh, for privilege user. So you need to log in through this URL, not uh, AWS.Amazon, uh, uh, that root uh, website. And here you can see um, if you download this CSV file, you will see the user's name. Um, and also login information. Okay. Okay. Um, and also, um, you can also have the option that to send email so that those login information, uh, including the password, uh, to the user's email. Okay. So that is something that you can do. However, here we do see an error. Okay. User created with errors. Uh, that is because again we are using the AWS Educate account, so the user has been created, but actually the users, um, this AWS IAM users that created by the Educate account is um, is not a valid account, so you cannot use the this IAM user to access this login because again we are using the Educate account, so we are not using the for privilege account. Okay, so it's just like a demo, but uh, show you how to do those stuff. Um, but you cannot create the real users by using the educator account. Okay, uh, so let's finish this demo. So here you can see we have user one that is in this group. Uh, we can also see that uh, whether or not they have changed the password. Okay, whether or not this MFA has been enabled and whether or not they have logged in uh, to the console yet. So those are something that you can check uh, if when you have a full privilege account. So let's continue that to add the user two. So let's see, user two. Okay, and again you can say automatic generate password or you can customize password. Uh, so for user two, we will put that one uh, into this S three group, and you can add tags. Review, okay, and also you can create user. Again, we have this error that is because we are using an educated account, so we are not able to create a real AWS user. So, but all the process is exactly the same. So let's finish our uh, last one user. So let's see. So you can see here user two is in S three group, and we can let's create our last user. So user so user two in the S3 group, that's user three. And the next, we want to put that one into this admin group. Okay, and you can review and also create. Okay, once again, that we have this error that is because we're using educated account, so we didn't create a real IAM user. Okay, so those are the steps that you, so we want to create users and we want 
uh, assign different access to different peoples. So you can create groups and attach policies to those different groups. You can see here for each group, we have one user. And then you can create users and you can assign the users to their the appropriate groups. And uh, you can also delete the groups or delete those users. For example, if your project is finished, uh, those people no longer need those access. You can just delete those group. Okay, and you can see delete. Okay, and those groups will be deleted. Uh, similarly, you can also delete those users. You can see that now uh, those users uh, un that do not belong to any groups. Okay, and you can also delete those users. However, because we are using edited account, so we cannot actually delete those users. Okay, so if you try to delete users, and you will see those errors because as edited account, uh, we are not allowed to uh, create uh, real IM users or to delete any users that we created. Okay, next. Uh, so I want to show you that uh, if you have a full privilege account, if you have a real AWS account, so how will that look like to log in with uh, IM users? So here, let's say we are going to go to the private mode. So um, on Chrome, it's called recognition mode. And here, uh, you can copy paste uh, the URL that I provided on Canvas. Okay. So here, we are now going to log in as an IM user. So you can see your, we are lo your log, you are going to log in at my account ID. Okay, now here, let's type the IM users. Uh, so here, let's say user, user one, and the password is provided on Canvas. Okay, and now we sign in. So now we sign in as an IM user. You can see IM user, username. Uh, this is not um, a, a full privilege or root user. So here, let's see if we can access some resources. Okay, so for user one, so, I, uh, so this is the user that I created with my root AWS user. Uh, so user one, I put that one into the EC2 group. So if we type EC2, okay, and you will be able to see those run instances. So that is zero. And uh, you will be able to see the events, the tags that we created earlier. So I have um, the cloud nine created. And also you can see the limits. Okay, so, so you can access the EC2 server service by uh, user one because user one is in that EC2 group. However, user one is not in the S3 group. So if we want access S3, and we will see a lot of errors. Okay, so you can see you don't have permission to list buckets. So you are not able to access the resources in S3 because user one is in that EC2 group. And for EC2 group users, they only have access to EC2 because we only attach the EC2 policy. And now let's sign out this user. And let's say we are going to log in with uh, user two. User two, okay. And the password is on Canvas. So for user two, uh, that is in that S3 group. So if we access EC2, and we should see those errors that we don't have access. Okay. And now if we go to S3, and we should be able to see those buckets. Again, this is in the my AWS account. So here you can see uh, you can see those buckets. However, uh, here I didn't give the full access control. Uh, so I gave the uh, the list privilege for this class so that 
you can see those bar keys name, but you are only able to just access one bar key. Okay, so for example, if you want to see the house price, you are not allowed to see the, the data in this bar key because I didn't give you access to this bar key. Okay, uh, if you look at this bar key, you are able to see this because I did give you access to this bar key. So you can check those HTML data or TXT data. Okay, so in those bar key. Okay, so that is uh, user two. Let's log out. And finally, let's log in as user three. User three. Okay. And remember that for user three, it is in the admin group. So we give the name admin because this user, uh, the, this group has access to EC2 and S3. So let's say we go to EC2. And we say, yes, they, they have access to see those instances. Okay. And if we go to S3, uh, so this user will have the same privilege to user 2. So they are able to see those, those bar keys. And if you open this uh, bucket and you're able to see the content. Okay, so that is for user 3. Okay, and also as a best practice, so in the real world, so you should use IM users instead of your root user when you access AWS console.